It's been a fascinating 25 years of running a business in Africa, in Kenya. We're a listed company. Um, the original business that my father started was limestone mining and, and converting the limestone into agriculture uh, lime. Uh, over the years, the range of products in the industrial minerals increased and uh, processes, more value-added processing of industrial minerals. In 1994, we decided to go into cement manufacture. We started with a small plant producing 50 tons of cement a day, um, listed the company in 1997 on the premise of growing the 50 ton per day to 200 ton per day. We are now producing two and a half thousand tons per day and in the next 18 months, the production capacity between Kenya and Tanzania, two locations, will increase to 6,000 tons per day. In the meanwhile, the company which was uh, less than $2 million when I joined in 1984, um, in fact, the balance sheet was only worth $50,000. In 1997, we listed the company at, at a market cap of $15 million. Uh, today, it is just over $215 million. And with the investments that we are making in new capacity in cement, we expect the figure to, to cross $400 million in the next two or three years. What has been interesting about this growth is the inherent or latent demand for cement and building materials in, in, in Africa. In East Africa, where we operate at the moment, cement consumption per capita is below 50 kilos per person per year. If you compare that to our neighbors in the north, Egypt, and most of the uh, Maghreb, North African countries, the figure is about 500 kilograms per person per year. South Africa is about 300 kilos per, per, year, per year. Angola, Nigeria, all in the 100, 120 kilos per person per year. The more developed an economy becomes, the more cement consumption there is, um, until it peaks at about six, 700 kilos and then tapers for more mature economies like North America or, or Europe to about 400 kilos per person per year. So we've got a long way to go in this market space. East Africa is growing and, and so are the neighboring countries and we have taken position by acquiring mining sites, limestone deposits, which is the main raw material for, 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 raw mater for, for manufacture of cement. And we intend to position ourselves over the next four or five years into the, the region with three or four other countries uh, surrounding East Africa and to become a five or six million ton per year cement company. Now that's, that's, that's a lot of uh, ambition there but it's possible, and it's possible because for one main reason, it is a, the locations that we have chosen, the sandbox that we, we've chosen to play in, is probably a little bit difficult for the multinational companies. The multinational companies uh, typically wait to acquire assets and, and then develop them for the long term. Cement has no uh, competitive product we, cement has been in the same form in one way or the other for the last 5,000 years. Um, and the large multinational companies, Lafarge, Holcim, Heidelberg, who already are present in Africa, have very long-term horizons when they, when they acquire smaller companies. So we are producing cement or manufacturing cement at a, at, at a very competitive price compared to the multinationals. But more importantly, we are constructing our cement plants at less than 50% of the cost of what the majors or the multinational companies are able to uh, build the plants at. Our typical investment in a cement plant now is under $100 per ton of annual capacity. The international average is about $220 per ton of capacity. And on a market valuation basis, the cement company stocks trade at anywhere from $300 to $350, $360 per ton of annual installed capacity. Our investment of $100, which is leveraged with a little bit of debt, typically 40% equity or internal generation, that's how we've grown so far, and 60-70% and of debt, therefore has given us a return of nearly 8 or 9 or 10 times 
in, in, in the space that we've been able to construct and commercialize a cement plant, which is about three or four years. So we're looking at, at growing the business uh, with the investments that are going on now. I think we will, we will grow to a 400 million plus market cap company. But with the ambition that we have for putting up more capacity, we're looking at a much larger growth in the next five or six years. The challenge that we have is growing safely and soundly now. So far, as a, as a majority shareholder, 50% of the company, I, 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 I own 50% shares in the company. I've managed to take high risk. We've leveraged our EBITDA mar EBITDAs by three and a half, four and a half, five times also to grow the company. But going forward now with the size of the company and the market cap, I think we need to protect our shareholders and, and need to bring in some equity. So I'm looking at various options for, for the next round of growth. Um, and the next round of growth over the next five or six years would require three of 300 million or thereabouts in, in, in funding. This is a combination of debt and equity. And, and how best to, to raise that money and, and, and yet um, give the right valuation for the shareholders who have come in at this point in time, knowing that there's a lot of growth coming in. Doing business in Africa, you can't afford to be without Africa Investor.